I watched the whole of 007 Road to a Million the weekend it came out. And after letting it sit with me for a while, I think it's time to go through it. Here's my list of pros and cons of 007 Road to a Million. That ain't TK Max, is it? This is impossible. Why don't you go down there? Yeah, let's get straight into the good stuff. The good stuff here is one, David Arnold's team. David Arnold is probably the best Bond composer of the modern era. No one will replace John Barry, but we love David Arnold and it was nice to hear another interpretation of the Bond theme by him. I think what we got here was a listen to maybe a return sound for Bond if David Arnold came back. Oh, hello. The only thing standing in their way... Number two is the production value. In fairness, I was really skeptical when this series was first announced. I just thought it'd be a reality show with James Bond things. But what they've done here is given a Bond sheen to the whole production. The cinematography, the locations, some of the items that they give him to wear, and even the questions. Like I think some people were expecting Bond trivia questions, but these questions they ask are very much like the sort of gold finger, diamonds are forever, moonraker, octopusy, like when M would go to Bond, what do you know about Fabergé eggs? It's that very esoteric knowledge that the Roger Moore and later Connery Bond would have known. Or when he comes in and mentions to M about Lepidoptery in Honor Majesty's Secret Service. They're the type of trivia questions they were asked. So actually, at first glance, you're like, oh, this has got nothing to do with Bond, but it's sort of like niche knowledge about specific things. So actually, I think the questions are quite good and they're tricky enough too. I also think the challenges add an extra dynamic to the whole thing, the running top of the train or the Aston Martin, climbing a cliff face, it's very Bondy stuff. What they do to polish off the end is very nice as well. You've got your Bollinger or your Martinis. This series also stocked with niche Bond references. I actually like this rather than hitting them over the head with certain things. There's a lot of little references that only the big Bond fans would notice. So when they're in Naples, they have to find a street with the name Sciarra. Obviously, Sciarra being the man that Craig's Bond assassinates at the start of Spectre. There's a lot in there for the super fans, which is kind of nice because it's that hidden language. It makes me feel reassured that they put people into this that were very interested in Bond. The contestants were really relatable. I think they selected the right sort of mix of people between a husband and wife brothers the nurses and a father and son there's just a nice grouping there where people all have different characteristics they're all relatable they all have interesting enough backstories but they don't completely labor them either i think talk about them but don't do an x factor on it in fairness however from an editing perspective i'd say this came out when they're pulling everything together it seems like the brothers were by far the favorite of the producers and, you know, there was quite a bit of crack out of them. They seem to be having fun all along the way. So maybe it was just easy to work around their content. And challenging these contestants is Brian Cox. He brings a real sense of menace to the challenges. I would be interested, though. I have a suspicion that Cox was not involved initially. So what they did was they did all the challenges, a random voice did it, and then they pulled it together in post and Cox's voice was added in. I would be very surprised if they had Brian Cox saying those things to the contestants out in the field. But it'd be it'd be nice to get a bit of information on that. He is like the Blofeld of this series and I think the resounding fan slash general opinion is that Cox should appear in a Bond film. I think now it's probably time to move into the cons of this series. The very first one that leapt out to me was that there was not a single Bond fan involved in this. Now, I have been made aware that initially when they put this out, it was not advertised as a Bond series. I I do think that it was always intended to be as such, or at least when they were going into production was intended as such because there's too many Bond references in there 
in terms of the large production pieces for it to not be intentional. Definitely, we're not looking for Bond fans to be involved in this. And I think they missed the trick there. It would get very tiresome if it was just 10 or 20 of me floating around being enamored by the niche Bond references, the locations, calling out different things. It might have even broke the fourth wall too much. But if there was a one Bond fan in there, I think it might have just added something extra to it because if you had someone like me and then my brother, so you'd have a Super Bond fan and a normie, if you will, you've got this dynamic where the normal person can see that through my eyes. So you have the relatable normal person and then the crazy Bond fan loving things because I really think they missed a trick, especially when they're in GoldenEye. It was never called out the importance of where they were. It was like they could have just been in a villa anywhere in terms of the average viewer watching this, but they were staying in the Ian Fleming villa at GoldenEye where the books were written. And it just never was called out and I thought that was an important thing. But yeah, I don't think it's any surprise I would have exploded with excitement if I was there. So maybe one fan, more than one fan probably is just going to be overkill and would break the fourth wall. My second criticism is more of like an Amazon criticism. I think this should have been released week by week. I think with a full unload binging streaming on this is the wrong model. Because people need to get invested in the individuals and create a conversation. And it just doesn't work for a series like this. I think the fear is maybe that people would have found out who won what during the thing and who got thrown out. But the decision to drop it all means that when you're doing the press events, when you're building up hype, it's just sort of like no one's invested together. I've watched it all. Certain people are on episode five. Someone hasn't even started it yet. So it's just, it doesn't create like a, a group enjoyment experience as a whole. And I think that is a miss. And I think they should really look at that, especially because even Netflix is capitulating on this model and starting to chop up their series into portions and release them. The music is a pro. It is a big one. David Arnold, that theme, and having the Bond needle drops all over the place is really good. I do think they should take David Arnold and use him to create a score for this series. It was nice when they won challenges or traveling to locations using the Bond music. It just seems like sometimes it was like overkill and maybe having a more curated approach would be the way to do it. It was really nice out the gate and I make these travel videos and I do Bond music drops all over the place. So I can't be a critic of this, but when you have David Arnold definitely making the budget to have him create bond desk music would be fantastic. It is great that they use the Skyfall Casino Royale music, even the No Time to Die. But yeah, just it might be nicer if this was purpose made first. Uh, it's nice to throw it in here and there, but all the time it just, yeah, it got repetitive. And that is an issue with this series is because in episode one, two and three, you're like, oh, this is great. And then by four and five, they're just reusing those sounds. So, um, yeah, that's just one criticism. I think relying more on David Arnold and less on what's come from the past would be good because it'd make the past sounds even more important. Final criticism is the production value. And I know you're saying production value was a good thing in the series. It is the greatest strength and weakness of this series, I believe. The high quality, well presented aspects of this series gives it that bond sheen. But the cost of delivering a series like that sometimes makes it hard to believe in the stakes, the challenges, the danger of what these contestants are going through. It was described to me by my uncle as overproduced. And yeah, that is an issue with this. I think back to what Christopher Nolan had to say about cinema. He was talking about film, but he references that audiences have a shorthand and they understand at a first glance whether they're looking at film, TV, a talk show, or even a reality show. And what's subconsciously going on when you're watching this is sometimes when the quality is extremely high and they're in a challenge, your brain is going, this isn't real. And that's a problem. 
in the future, this series is going to have to strike a balance between delivering that sheen and quality that we've come to expect from a Bond film, but make it off the cuff, realistic and sort of have us be invested in these people. And they're really going to have to struggle with this. And I don't have the answer. But at the moment, the overproduced high quality aspect of it makes it unrealistic or makes the viewer question how staged are these tasks. I saw that and I heard Christopher Nolan say that a long time ago and it really called out to me here. So these are conflicting forces almost. That Bond film machine and quality versus verisimilitude in the reality environment. And I believe if they figure out and get it right, it's going to be completely captivating for people to watch. What are average relatable people going on these Bond journeys? And those are my pros and cons of 007 Road to a Million. It's no secret I was really sceptical of this when it first came out, but it turned out to be very nice weekend watching. We're not going to get Bond 26 anytime soon, so it is nice to see something that used the Bond IP in a interesting way. And yeah, I was very against this almost when I first heard the news, but after experiencing this show, seeing what's good about it, what I think can be improved, I'm in favor of experiments with the franchise like this, under one condition. They're done by people who care and love this franchise. Thanks for watching, shoot the like button and subscribe. You may have noticed I have a membership button on the channel now. It's just a nice way to support with buying things like hard drives make things easier for the channel and members get at least 24 hours early access on all videos. Check that out if it's something of interest to you.